Sup guys, Hicking here bringing you another manga review this week on Black Clover chapter 200, sorry, chapter 323 partners. So last week we ended up with Yami coming to the rescue with what appeared to be a wooded magic sword uh, courtesy of William Vengeance and saving Nux's life just as he was ready to pretty much give his life to save Asta's by, by the hands of Lucifero. And yeah, this week's chapter is not a very action-packed chapter. There, there are moments, little small moments, but mostly it's a very heavy character chapter focusing on Yami's relationship with uh, the Black Bulls and mostly with his uh, supposed partnership with Nucked and we dwell into that aspect of the relationship a bit more you know hence the title partners so we start off with uh, a flashback basically showing how Yami recovered we have Vanessa there we have uh, her magic cat Roach there you know I don't know if he's helping out or anything but really it's mostly Grey who comes in and heals him and we, well, we discover some, we, we get a little bit of setup here potentially for something to come in the future, maybe. Because, uh, you know, as she's trying to fix up his body, she pretty much uh, points out that the structure of his body has been altered and that it resembles the devil that, you know, Asta is possessed is possessed by. Um, so, yeah, it seems that, uh, you know, uh, Yami's time in as a hostage in whatever that magic was that happened has sort of changed up his body a bit. It's given him a bit more magic as well, it seems. But uh, the fact that his body has been altered to somewhat resemble a devil's, if you will, makes me wonder and curious about something. Is it possible that uh, all of these devils that we are seeing didn't start off as devils but were normal human beings who transformed into devils? I mean, think about uh, what happened to uh, Light, a uh, Nish, if you will, a uh, Light. You know, uh, you know, he let that darkness and despair consuming until he turned to a, basically a giant freaking demon. Uh, and that, that was just an elf. Does that mean that would happen for all the elves? Is this a case of. You, you know, like, maybe dark magic can consume you and turn you into this kind of being, perhaps? I don't know if this is a setup or foreshadowing for something to come down the road later on, but I feel like it is. I feel like I feel like they won't just put that in there and not do anything with it in the future. So maybe it is sort of a setup for like, oh yeah, humans can turn into devils, like, depending on, uh, you know, the situation or certain uh, magics you can turn into that maybe so it'll be very it'd be very it'd be very curious and interesting to discover that Lucifer used to be a human once maybe but uh, we'll have to wait and see how that goes maybe maybe that's not what it means at all but uh, it's something to think about and theorize about so uh, yeah I don't I don't know if this is Grey doing this but uh, she does mention that his body is, is a wreck but it's all flowing with magic and then we get this uh, Dark magic black moon. I don't know what this is. It just pops up above Yami's head. I think it, we saw that in last chapter as well. He wakes up and he's like, "You really saved my ass, uh, Gray Vanessa." So it seems that Vanessa, with with Rogue's, Rouge's magic and Gray's magic, they were able to heal and save Yami's life. He gets up, and we get Patry and uh, you know carrying a leash with him, along with uh, what's his Lagris, I think. Uh, well, you know, the, the brother of, uh, I don't even know the nail character's name. There's so many characters. I haven't, like I said, once, once I stop watching the anime for something, uh, I, I tend to forget all the characters' names uh, until it, it comes back to me slowly, slowly. But uh, yeah, I think this is Langrius coming in uh, and using his, uh, but whatever, spatial magic to basically bring Patria and William to, to Yami. Um, uh, yeah, we, we get this revelation that, you know, Patrick can't fight because he no longer possesses a Gilmore, so, a Grimmore. So, yeah, um, yeah, uh, as he says, I'm afraid I won't be much of an assistant in the fight. So that kind of explains why he's not uh, getting involved. And, yeah, it's kind of a shame, really, because, you know, they can use all the help they can get, but it is what it is. Uh, William just, you know, he looks like he's screwed. You, you can kind of see the, the, the sort of devilish veins on his face as well. So clearly he's affected by whatever magic affected Yami as well. Um, but, you know, he does tell Yami that, you know, uh, you know, specifically with Yami, he says with your magic we can still fight. And he gives him the sword. He gives him the world tree magic uh, blade of Mistletine or whatever it's called. And hands it to Yami as he takes it. So... And Yami himself, we get a little moment between the two where Yami himself admits that he has not forgiven uh, Vengeance for 
what he did during the uh, elf uh, re reincarnation arc. But uh, he does say at the end, but the both of us somehow got caught up in this mess, so let's end it together. So yeah, William obviously is not going to be part of this fight, Patrick is not going to be part of this fight. Um, I'm assuming Lingris is going to be a lot longer, is that how you say his name? Is going to stay behind her and uh, protect them too, since you know, they can't fight. Uh, but, you know, at least Yami's got somewhat of uh, Vengeance's magic power with him, with that blade. So hopefully that should provide some sort of uh, comfort for him, I guess. He does say to him, you know, just before it flashback ends, if we get back home, let's have a drink. So looking forward to that, unless it's a red flag that one of them is going to die. Hope not. But we, we then cut to the present. Yami's blocking Lucifero's punch. And, uh, yeah, Lucifer even notes that he has dark magic. So I'm assuming that, yeah, uh, Yami's magic can hurt a freaking devil as well. So Yami and Asta, in this case, I would argue, are, you know, the main stars in this point. They're like, them two are going to have to work together, you know, master and pupil to try and overcome him. But, uh, yeah. Um... <laughs> I don't know if this is Lucifer saying this, I think, yeah, it is him, uh, you bastard, I'll make sure to deal with you later. So he tries to punch him, and he actually manages to knock Yami away, and hits him into Nock, and they both go flying backwards. The, the Grimmore's flying at the same time, you got Asta coming in, like, trying to go for a swing here. And in, in my opinion, we get the best moment of the chapter here. Uh, we, get, we get someone running, and then uh, Lucifer is about to go for the kill punch on Asta. Asta's left open, and then we get this amazing shot of Zoran, uh, uh, Zoran and uh, Nero coming in. Both of them, along with uh, Vanessa's cat, Magic Cat Rouge, all three of them jumping in. Like seriously, I was saying last chapter, like, like I wanted to see Zoran do something. I wanted to see him get involved, and here he is jumping in the fall with Nero and Rouge. And Lucifero punches Zorin, but obviously if you're familiar with his magic, trap magic, uh, reverse counter trap magic, eggs, boom, yeah, uh, mana method, sealing magic, it activates a spell, you know, boom, the, the trap magic comes out, piling out, and uh, Zorin's, uh, Zorin's line and expression here, like, seriously, I love Zorin, he's, he's, got, he's like, he's probably the creepiest looking, or depending on your point of view, the creepiest or the coolest looking design character here, but let me show you the dignity of being a senpai, Mr. Almighty Demon King, and uh, Nero as well, and that of being a rookie too. So them, them two doing their thing, trying to seal this dude, obviously it's not going to work, but it, it provides at least some sort of time for them maybe to regroup uh, and recover. Um, and not not is begging Yami to leave him basically. I mean this dude has a death wish at this point. If you know his story, you know that he kind of blames himself I guess maybe for his brother's death and that isn't really his fault um, or is it I don't remember his backstory again again I kind of skipped through these last few chapters just to sort of catch up you know after from where the anime from where the anime left off but uh, he does say whether I live or die is of no concern to me Yami doesn't uh, you know again it's a very heavy knocked and Yami hold on a second look he's pissing me off again what's up buddy you want to go out come on do not come back in though do not come back in Cute little kitties. So Nox says when he looks at Yami, he's reminded of his old self, the self that I hate so much. So please just get away, you don't need to save me. I'm the one who took Morgan from you. So yeah, it, I guess it is Nox's fault that uh, Morgan... Yeah, because they were doing some sort of uh, devilish experiments one day and then, and then uh, something bad happened. So uh, yeah, that's why I can't let you throw your life away trying to save mine. We get little flashbacks with young Yami and Nox there. It's so crazy to see that Nox needs to be this very different looking guy to his brother Morgan. Uh, because you are my precious friend. You know, if, if, we, if we had... If, if early on, when, we, when he was first introduced, that we had the idea that Nox hates Yami, this chapter pretty much rein, uh, uh, does the opposite and reinfor reinforces how much of a friend Yami is to him, actually, and how much guilt ridden and knocked is as a character blaming himself for his brother and all the situations that happened and Yami just replies you're an idiot aren't you listen up dumbass from now on you're gonna keep living and you're gonna save people the way Morgan did besides a man doesn't need a reason to stick his neck out for a friend so you know not knocked Com you know again comfort words from Yami to not there 
just reinforces how close these two really are and why he was chosen in particular to be the vice captain of the Black Bulls. They are clearly best friends. Um, and it's just nice to see that. Uh, and we get this flashback with Morgan, you know, him telling him, telling Yami how very similar he is to, to his brother Nacht. Not just in terms of the magic, uh, Ami's twin, and yet you understand him even better than I do. Cut that out, you're being weird. <laughs> it's frustrating to admit, but I think you're more suited to be my brother's partner than me. Um, and I think that's true. I think it's true. It shows. And I like this part here. You can't keep acting like a kid forever, Yami. Sure I can, moron. I may be a man, but my heart will forever be that of a boy's. Which I can relate to. It, it sort of reminds me about Naruto as well, where the Jirai is like, you know, you have to grow up and mature, otherwise you'll be a fool for the rest of your life. And Naruto was like, then I'll remain a fool for the rest of that's what it takes, you know. And I kind of feel like that. I, I always get told that, you know, I, I mean, to be fair, I am told I am mature, to be to be fair. But, uh, so you know, when it comes to, like, Pacific family members, they're like, you're, a, you're, you're like a freaking seven-year-old kid or whatever. It's like, oh, well, yeah. Being an adult sucks. <laughs> I, 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 I'd rather be. I'd rather. I'd rather keep my man-child uh, personality than you know be be a smock up adult. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but yeah, a uh, very very decent character chapter ending with uh, the two of them uh, proclaiming, "Let's play with him a bit, shall we?" Uh, and we get this nice very panel of them as young kids or young teenagers if you will to now to now grown-ups and yeah it, it, it partners in crime standing together that's what the little tag thing is that ends it with but yeah it looks like next chapter is gonna be hopefully a big action chapter because it feels like all the character stuff is now gone out of the way do you know what I mean we've gotten a lot of the character moments from the supported and the mains and now it feels like everything's now set up for this uh, clash between uh, the Black Bulls, uh, you know, and uh, against uh, Lucifero. So yeah, next week looks like it's going to be a, a big one. And I can't wait to see that. Overall, decent chapter. A uh, very well-developed chapter, especially the relationship between these two. It's, it's nice to see that. It's nice to see that Nock isn't that very hateful. He does care about Yami and vice versa. And yeah, I can't wait to see what happens next week. Remember guys to like and subscribe and as always I shall see you when I shall see you. Take care and...